and for spill containment and abatement, he sells to the city and other people who do cleanups. Okay, so nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. They're all used. That's great. We'll head into the mill, into the grinder. <laughs> So, uh, Casey, we're in our grinding room, so we sharpen all our own equipment here. We make all our own knives. We can reproduce, as I was mentioning, any molding. We had a request a few years ago for someone who wanted a piece of wooden eavesdropping. And <laughs> so what we do is we make a template to whatever profile I want. So someone can give us a CAD drawing or they can give us a piece of material. And we will make a template so you can see that cuts the groove for the eaves trough. And this was matching a wooden eaves trough on a historic building. So we cut that template. So how do you cut that? Like how do you get that template? That is cut with hacksaws and files. We now make all our templates out of plexiglass. These are some of the older ones. So we made another template for the side. And with the templates, we grind two knives. So these are um, ribbed knives that fit inside a head and these spin in the machine at 8,000 RPMs and clean out the material and give us a nice finished product. So if you come this way, I will show you uh, what those heads look like. So this is a head that's been used, so there's a bit of gum on it. It'll get clean before it gets put out again. It's got the two knives on. So we put the knives in the head, we sharpen the knives, we measure the radius, minimum and maximum um, on a measuring stand, input that in the computer or the molder, and then tell the molder what size you want the finished product to be, and it comes out that size. Because it does it in layers, I'm assuming? Uh, it'll do it all in one pass, just one pass. chew it all out, yeah. Yep. It probably takes a lot of power, especially if you're out a whole trough. It does take a lot of power, and you adjust the speed and everything else depending how much you're taking out of there. So we're going to head in the mill and have a look at one of those machines. Uh, so I'm going to get Mark to run a piece of this through the molder in a minute. I'm just going to talk to you about the molder. Just before you start it up. So Casey, this is a six head molder and it's a machine that can mill material anything from half an inch by half an inch up to 12 inches by 8 inches. So we can put big Douglas fir timbers through here. We can make small shoe moldings in here. We obviously don't like making shoe moldings in this machine because there's a lot of horsepower. So we use one of our smaller molders to make the smaller moldings. We right now are making some pine flooring so we're going to start the machine up in a minute and we'll see some rough pine going into the machine and some nice clear red pine from the Ottawa Valley coming out of the machine. So in one pass, it puts the tongue and the groove on, it cleans the top and the bottom up, puts anti-cupping grooves on the bottom, and you end up with a nice finished product. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art machine that can run up to 100 feet a minute and uh, produces a lot for us every day. Wow. Yes, exactly. So we'll, we'll watch this. You can fire it up and run your... And Like a clean shop. Yeah. So you can feel the. Uh, we're always very proud of the finish we get on yeah. our machines. It get a very nice finish. So uh, we're gonna have a look at this machine here. 
So we're here with Ryan. This is a laser guided multi rip machine. So it takes all of our hardwoods, rips them straight to whatever width we want. It's called a glue line rip saw, so it can go straight from here to our laminating room. The finish on the blade is so nice. <clears throat> we can put up to four blades in there and rip whatever width we want. Gives us two perfectly straight edges before it heads through a molder. Another way we keep our quality up and control it. So it's, uh, it's got a big 50 horsepower motor on it. You can imagine doing two inch birch on a table saw, you'd be shaking it and it just grabs it and flies it right through. And there, how did it know? He's, he's so got the laser there. Uh, that tells him where his inside blade is. You'll see the laser on the wood. Uh, okay. And so he knows how straight it is. He has to move it at all. And this is for a bunch of tabletops we're gluing up. Yeah. We'll head over here. So Casey, this is something that every uh, person who enjoys woodworking should have in their basement. It's a 40 inch twin belt sander. So it's a drum sander that can sand our large tabletops. It's got two belts on it so we can adjust the grit so we can start off with a 60 or an 80 grit and finish with a 120 or a 180 or 220. That would save me a lot of time. It's a fantastic machine and uh, Always when you get a machine that you enjoy, you wonder how you live without it before you have it. <laughs> so we have our horizontal bandsaw here, so we, we resaw a lot of wood, so we're resawing two inch cedar, and uh, this is just for some square boards, but we make tongue groove, V-joint, flooring, and everything out of it. And a lot of people now like rough face siding, and this machine makes beautiful rough face siding got a bed on it that will tilt so you can adjust the angle on it and make bevel siding on it. So why do you call it resaw? So uh, resawing, we call our whole operation here a remanufacturing facility, so we're a remanner is what they say in the trade. Uh, so resawing is taking wood that's already been sawn and resawing it, so we're sawing it again. So we're taking lumber that's been sawn <coughs> and we're sawing it again. So I just put the tension on. We have lubricant that sprays on automatically on the blade. I have set the thickness. I'm going to be uh, resawing at 0.84 of an inch. It'll give me two equal pieces. I start the blade. And it's got variable speed feed on it, so it's very slow right now because we were doing some 2x12s yesterday. <clears throat> but you can speed it up to go as fast as 20 meters a minute. I'll do it at about 10. Yeah, that'd be good, yep. So it gives you that rough texture. That's really okay, we'll head out here. Where's the wood here? Wood coming from? Uh, so we, we do a lot of cedar from BC. Lots and lots of white pine from the Ottawa Valley. Um, uh, maple, birch from Ontario and Quebec. A lot of red oak, white oak, walnut, cherry from Pennsylvania and Kentucky. Um, and then a lot of exotics from around the world.